I would like to first uh, say that uh, I find uh, the hold-up theory intellectually appealing. And I think that uh, the, it does not require guile or uh, deception. However, what I do think is that it has a number of limiting principles, the hold-up mechanism, and that the theory itself relies on assumptions which may not always or may not often be uh, satisfied, and in particular, they may not be satisfied in the context of standard essential patents. So what I would like to do in my talk is uh, first uh, recall uh, the, uh, the mechanics of the hold-up theory in a slightly different way, and uh, then explain why I think that uh, friend, friend commitment can remedy a lot of the concerns, if not all of the concerns that we might have with hold up in the context of standard essential patents. And, um, and then uh, explain why I think that uh, antitrust liability, and here I concur very much with uh, Pierre, why antitrust liability is uh, uh, for, for actions, for um, injunctions, for, um, for uh, standard essential patents is not really necessary and actually may be harmful uh, to investment. So what are the necessary ingredients for a hold-up? And I'll start with the, uh, in the context of non-standard essential patents. First, clearly, we must have a patent uh, holder and an implementer of the patent technology. The second necessary ingredient is that it is not practical to negotiate a license prior to, uh, prior to the implementer investing in product design which incorporates the patent technology. Because of that, licensing negotiations will take place after the product design costs are sunk. And we typically call that, well, often call that ex post negotiations. Now, the third ingredient for hold up is that the patent owner can obtain an injunction for a patent infringement if license negotiations fail. So basically, the IP uh, lies firmly in the hands of the patent holder and he can basically exclude almost at will um, uh, uh, the uh, potential implementer if, if he so wants. So in these circumstances, if these necessary conditions or necessary ingredients for a holdup are present, what might happen? What happens? Well, what happens is that in ex post negotiations, after the uh, prospective licensee, the implementer has already sunk some cost in product design, which incorporates the patent technology, its outside option becomes worse than what it is in negotiations prior to the product design investment. It becomes worse relative to the option inside the negotiations. What happens is that the value to the parties of reaching an agreement in ex post licensing negotiations is higher when you compare this value uh, uh, um, uh, if, if the license is negotiated uh, ex ante before the, before, the, uh, uh, design, before the product design costs were sunk. So there is a, some sort of an externality of a sunk investment, ex ante investment, on the ex post bargaining. And uh, um, the patent owner can extract some of that increment in the value, and that basically confers a negative externality on the uh, uh, implementer. Because of that, uh, the implementer may be less willing to, uh, to uh, invest in product design. The solution, of course, uh, uh, given this mechanism, is deceptively simple. We could either force ex ante negotiations prior to implementer's investment, but we already said earlier that actually a necessary condition for holdup to happen is that such ex ante uh, negotiations are not feasible or not efficient. So that is typically not a good option. It might work in some circumstances. And the second one, as proposed by 
Professor Shapiro in his famous 2010 papers and other papers is to limit the availability of junctions, of course. That is, in other words, to apply liability rather than property rule to patent infringements. And that liability is then applied with reference to some fair royalty rate, whatever that might be. Now, I won't discuss uh, this uh, uh, issue here, liability versus property rule. Uh, it has its own set of problems, um, but uh, that is what has been proposed, and that what, that's what basically uh, underlies the, uh, the proposal to limit uh, the availability of injunctions uh, also for standard, and in particular for standard essential patents. Now, how about hold-up mechanism for standard essential patents? Well, the mechanism is si similar in, in a way. At least it can be conceptualized in the same way. After the patent the technology is included into the standard, there will be no alternative technology available. And again, this inclusion into the standard confers a bargaining externality ex post. So again, the value of reaching an agreement in licensing negotiations uh, for standard uh, essential patents relative to the value of an agreement, of such an agreement prior to the inclusion of the patented technology into the standard is higher. And similarly as before, the patent holder, to the extent it has bargaining power, can appropriate some of this value of increase. And this is the negative externality which leads potentially, or could lead potentially, to lower level of investment. Now, for an for a, for a implementer holdup in uh, the context of standard essential patents, it is, of course, necessary to assume that friend commitment is not enforceable. Uh, to see why this is necessary, uh, consider two options. Uh, first option, uh, take the first option to be the unbiased review by a third party of friend terms. It is immediately clear that if there is such an option, it's actually trivial to show, that the outside option for the implementer will be the third party determination of royalties and that this will remove or drastically reduce the bargaining externality which I described earlier, which results from inclusion of the patent into the standard. So there cannot be any holdup in these circumstances. In a, in a sense, uh, unbiased third party review of friend terms will have the same effect as if negotiations took place prior to implementers' investment. And therefore, there could be no uh, externality in negotiations ex post. Now, what about the option two, which seems to be uh, 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 also a potential realistic option? In this option, the court does not itself set a friend rate, but it will rather assess the willingness of the prospective license or a licensee, while at the same time, it will assess validity and infringement. Uh, with my co-authors, we have looked at this option uh, in, a, in a paper, uh, in, a, in a context of an um, economic model. And in our model, the court uh, assesses the prospective licenses offer, and it only grants injunctions if it finds that this offer is below friend, and if it, fi if it finds the uh, patent to be uh, valid. What we find is that there is uh, no systematic holdup in such a setting. In fact, uh, what can be an equilibrium outcome is that uh, the patent holder may end up accepting royalties below friend. Uh, in our model, uh, weak patents will be litigated in equilibrium, and this is uh, consistent with what we see in reality. So, in a nutshell, if the courts do balance the concerns about holdup and reverse holdup, there is no need for additional antitrust liability. That is my point. So what about the institutional setting, the reality? Uh, um, two minutes. I think I'm done. Uh, are the necessary conditions for holdup in the standard essential patent context uh, satisfied in reality? Well, most likely they are not. Uh, again, with uh, a set of co-authors, uh, we have reviewed court procedures in France, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, and the UK. And what we found is that injunctions for set 
standard essential patents have not typically been readily available. In fact, preliminary injunctions are extremely difficult to obtain for all patents, not only for standard essential patents. And the final injunctions are rarely granted, and only after the court has been sort of uh, convinced that, that the prospective licensee has either not made an offer or really has not shown any willingness to negotiate. Now, before I conclude, I would like to mention some additional risks of reverse holdup for standard essential patents. The first one is that the friend commitment is, is a one-sided one. And this is something similar to what Pierre was uh, referring to earlier. It gives an option. It gives an option uh, um, for the uh, prospective licensee to challenge after it has uh, concluded or accepted an offer as, as being front. And uh, as Ferb and uh, his co-authors show in a paper, this can actually lead to a holdup of the patent holder. So the reverse holdup, depressing innovation uh, below what might be socially optimal. Now, this, this is not something that will perhaps often happen or always happen or have a big effect, but it is a factor that has to be taken into account. And the other factor, of course, is that antitrust liability is also one-sided. And similarly here, when courts balance uh, the risk of holdup against the risk of reverse holdup, uh, the, the added antitrust liability, uh, um, given all the other limiting principles uh, for the holdup mechanisms, might just uh, lead to a, 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 an outcome which we don't want to see, in which uh, patent holders obtain uh, royalty rates which are below friend. Um, let me conclude with a few views on the Huawei ZTE judgment. What I don't think is good about it is that it does not eliminate a separate antitrust risk associated for actions uh, for injunctions. But what I think is good about this judgment is that in contrast to the EC's position in Samsung and Motorola, it offers no easy escape for any of the parties. And in particular, it offers no, at least in my interpretation, uh, probably uh, Advocate General Vettelet would be much better placed for that, but it offers no easy escape for the uh, prospective licensee. And um, I cited uh, here the recitals which I think uh, uh, confirm that view. Uh, in particular, before an infringing um, implementer can raise the abusive nature of the action for an injunction, it must give a friend counteroffer. Um, and the, perhaps the last one is also important in that the unilateral proposal for a, a third party friend determination establishes no safe harbor for any of the parties. In conclusion, systematic holdup, I believe, is unlikely when courts consider friend defense before granting an injunction. Uh, reverse holdup is a reality, is also a theoretical reality, and uh, practitioners in the field will confirm that it is uh, uh, also a reality in practice. Uh, because of that, because of friend defense and because uh, of the potential for reverse holdup, adding antitrust liability to the current institutional setting, I believe, contributes to the risk of reverse holdup and I think is uh, something that we should not uh, have done or avoid doing. And with that, I conclude. Thank you. Thank you.